Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you all from wherever you are. I'm speaking to you this morning from deepest, darkest Cornwall, um, but um, where the weather is not very good. But um, it's a great privilege to be leading the service today, and we look forward very much to hearing from Jimmy later on in the service. I thought we would start today uh, with some words that Sue has written for Pew's News, just to bring us into a time, this time of worship. And I'm not sure if you've read her prayers in Pew's News, but um, they begin in the following way. This week, our Sunday Bible passages relate to Pentecost. On the day of the Jewish festival of Pentecost, Jesus' disciples experience being filled dramatically with God's Holy Spirit. This power and life spills out into the whole of creation. Lord, help us to look out and listen for your Holy Spirit. May we welcome you with our open hearts and minds. Call us, inspire us, surprise us and challenge us. Give us confidence and calm assurance. Lead us to your power and love. And so we begin with our words and responses on the screen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! As we wait in silence, fill us with your spirit. As we listen to your word, Fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit as we long for your empowering, fill us with your spirit. Amen. Now our musicians will lead us with the hymn, God Has Spoken. God has spoken by his prophets, spoken his unchanging word. He from age to age proclaiming God the one, the righteous Lord. In the world's despair and turmoil, one firm anchor still holds fast. God is on his throne eternal. He alone the first and last. God has spoken by Christ Jesus, Christ the everlasting Son, brightness of the Father's glory, with the Father ever one. By the word incarnate, God before all time began. Light of light to earth descending, man revealing God. 
his word unchanging. God the first and God the last. And so we come to our prayers of forgiveness. Let us pray. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the world and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We confess to our selfishness and lack of love. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our fear and failure in sharing our faith. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you our stubbornness and lack of trust. Fill us with your spirit, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Now, Jimmy will lead us in a prayer. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. In this talk, I'm going to attempt to show how the way God is working has changed down the ages, starting with the Old Testament then coming to Jesus, and then with the coming of the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, God communicates to his people, giving commandments and speaking directly through the prophets, such as Jeremiah. And Margaret is going to read to us from the first chapter of the prophet Jeremiah. And you need to be seen. The Lord said to me, I chose you before I gave you life, and before you were born, I selected you to be a prophet to the nations. I answered, Sovereign Lord, I don't know how to speak. I'm too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say that you are too young, but go to the people I send to you, send you to, and tell them everything I command you to say. Do not be afraid of them, for I will be with you to protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the Lord stretched out his hand, touched my lips and said to me, Listen, I am giving you the words you must speak. Today I give you authority over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow to build and to plant. We're now going to have a visual aid, which uh, I think I first copied from a preacher 60 years ago or so. And Margaret, my capable assistant, is going to demonstrate. Now? Now, yes, now. We'll get there in the end. As you see, we have a glove and a book. And in the Old Testament, God spoke, giving us commandments and telling us how to behave. So I'm going to say to uh, the glove, glove, pick up the book. 
nothing happens. Perhaps the glove's deaf. Glove, pick up the book. Still nothing happens. You see, the glove is dead and lifeless. And the children of Israel in the Old Testament were often spiritually dead and lifeless. They were reluctant and even incapable of responding to God's word. And let's be honest about it, we can be the same. So God had a problem. What do I do with my people? And the Holy Trinity had a discussion. And they came to a unanimous agreement that the son, Jesus, would become a human himself to show us how to behave and live in the best way. So Jesus comes and Jesus shows us how to live. And I am now going to demonstrate to the glove how it picks up the book. Glove, pay attention. It's quite simple. Thumb and forefinger, put them round the book, push them together and lift up the book. Glove, pick up the book. Now I've shown you how to do it. But the trouble is, you see, the glove is still lifeless, powerless and dead and we're the same jesus comes to show us and we can't follow his example we're not good enough and sometimes we're reluctant Put that away now. in the gospels god sent his son into the world to set an example and to teach but Jesus now knows what humans are like. We don't respond to instructions. And although he sets us a wonderful example, we find we're quite incapable of being like him. We're attracted by his teaching, but we just don't come up to standard. Jesus becomes aware that we need further help. Now Janet is going to read to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, where he explains the help that is coming. The work of the Holy Spirit. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. For if I do not go away, the counsellor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. In regard to righteousness, because I am going to the Father, when, where you can see me no longer. And in regard to judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I still have many things to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Janet. So Jesus promises now that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, whatever version of the Bible you have, the advocate is coming. And at his ascension, Jesus says farewell to his friends and returns to his family in heaven, 
where he belongs. In the Acts and the Epistles, the early Christians received the Holy Spirit to empower them to serve Christ in the world. And the coming of the Holy Spirit is recorded in Acts chapter 2, which Stephen is now going to read to us. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now, when this was no noised abroad, the multitude came together and were conf confounded because that every man heard, heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea and Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, in Egypt and in parts of Libya around Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Thank you, Stephen. If we go back for a moment into the Old Testament, prophet Jeremiah again, God made a promise. And Jeremiah said, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant. And last week, we heard during the communion service when I celebrated 60 years in the uh, consecration prayer, Jesus says, this is the new covenant in my blood. And Jesus himself initiates this new covenant through his death and resurrection. He has explained already why he had to leave. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, he will send him to you. In the Acts of the Apostles, the day, the, the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is given. Jesus promised earlier in the Acts, Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. And what did the disciples do? Acts chapter 1 tells us. They went to a room and devoted themselves to prayer and the Holy Spirit came.
And so the Holy Spirit came and made an enormous difference. The Holy Spirit came upon the apostles and the disciples. And so now I still have the glove and I still have the instruction. Glove, pick up the book. But the glove now has power within it. And so when I say glove, pick up the book, it can do just what I suggest. The glove can react to the power within it. And when the Holy Spirit is sent upon the friends of Jesus, they become different people. They start to proclaim the gospel. The crowds hear it all apparently in a language that they can understand. So if we're going to do Christ's work in the world, we too must have the gift of the Holy Spirit. We need this gift to become like Christ and to do his work. Once again, we're told in the Acts of the Apostles, even Jesus needed the gift of the Holy Spirit. He couldn't do his ministry without the Holy Spirit. And the Acts of the Apostles tells us, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit. And if Jesus needs the Spirit, how much more do you and I? You will receive power, said Jesus, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. Now, I've been doing this job for 60 years, and one of the things I've learned in 60 years is that, uh, on the whole, church members don't like evangelism. They avoid the subject. And in the world we live in, evangelism isn't popular anyway. Why should we make people to be like us? Why should we make people believe the same things as we do? But Jesus doesn't call most of us to be preachers. Jesus does call all of us to be witnesses. And what does a witness do? A witness tells what's happened to them, what they've seen for themselves. And we can all say, can't we, what difference our faith means to us? What difference it makes to be a follower of Jesus? And please note very carefully what Bishop Leslie Newigin, the great missionary bishop from India, used to say. You shall be my witnesses. It's not a command. It's a promise. Thank you, Jimmy. So we come to that time where we affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. 
This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Vivian will now lead us in our prayers of intercession and the Lord's Prayer. At Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the disciples were empowered and emboldened to go out and serve their Lord. When I use the words, Lord, come to bless us, please use the response, fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul. Bring the presence of the risen Lord to renew my heart and make me whole. Cause your word to come alive in me. Give me faith for what I cannot see. Give me passion for your purity. Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. Generous God, we thank you for the transforming power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that we may experience this power in our lives and be strengthened to serve you better. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. We thank you for the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. We ask you to make us wise to understand your will in today's complex world. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit, come abide within. May your joy be seen in all I do. Love enough to cover every sin in each thought and deed and attitude. Kindness to the greatest and the least. Gentleness that sows the path of peace. Turn my striving into works of grace breath of God, show Christ in all I do. We thank you for the peace of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to bring reconciliation where there is division and strife. In particular, we pray that the ceasefire in Israel and Gaza will hold and that a lasting peace will be found. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the healing of your Holy Spirit. We pray for those who are ill or suffering in body, mind or spirit. In particular, we remember the people of India and others suffering from the ravages of the pandemic. We pray especially for them now and also for those known personally to us. We remember John Litchfield, Emily and Joan. We pray too for those mourning the loss of a loved one. Bring your comfort at this time. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We ask you to reveal in our lives the love of Jesus. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. 
Holy Spirit, from creation's birth, giving life to all that God has made. Show your power once again on earth. Cause your church to hunger for your ways. Let the fragrance of our prayers arise. Lead us on the road of sacrifice. That in unity, the face of Christ will be clear for all the world to see. Lord, come to bless us. Fill us with your spirit. Holy Spirit of God, we pray for your kingdom in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we come to our notices. It's good to see so many things starting to open up and a fairly full diary emerging. Here are just a few things to point out for you. We're having the fourth and final in conversation uh, Zoom cast on Wednesday, the 26th, with the Reverend Hilary Bond, priest and climate change campaigner. And Lewis um, is, uh, speaks very, very uh, highly of her. So uh, let's try not to miss that. Gold Space on Tuesday at Stickland at 7 p.m. continues, as does morning prayer at 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday on Zoom. Next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, and so there's no Zoom as such, but uh, there will be uh, a service of communion at St. Catherine's Chapel at 10.30 a.m., to which all are invited. And then there will be an outside service, weather permitting, at 6 p.m. at St. Nicholas Church, Clenston. And this is to be a Teze-themed service. All are welcome. There are, of course, um, other social events in our parishes coming up. Do have a look at Pew's News for those. But the first of them is at Turnworth, and this is a, a grand plant sale next weekend, 29th and 30th of May, between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. in the churchyard at St. Mary's. And all proceeds from the plant sale will go to the vital work of church upkeep, particularly important at this time. Lots of other events further off, please take note of those and your support will be greatly appreciated. We're going to say our offertory prayer now. Let us pray. Thinking of all God's blessings. God of abundance, Sometimes we have to learn how to have faith in the in-between, when there doesn't seem to be enough. Show us how your people take care of each other. When we fear to share what we have, show us the grace of receiving an unexpected gift. When we hang on tight for later, just in case, show us that you are in this very moment. In these ways, teach us to give, to share, and to offer ourselves for your kingdom work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we go to our musicians for our final hymn.
May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. May the spirit of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. And may of the Lord Jesus, may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our lives. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you.